Everybody out there that sees me, yeah, they know me as Alex Thomas, the comedian, the actor, and all that. But that's truly where it all started. Like, when I ended up being a comedian, I really did talk about my life growing up. And the neighborhood that we grew up with, it was like gangsters with two parents. <laughs> you know, these, these guys were like gangsters and got a mama and a daddy at the house. You know, people didn't know that five minutes from the Beverly Center, there was Mansfields, you know what I mean? Mansfields, you know, I'm, I guess I'm OG age, so they started off as hustlers. It used to be MFH. And then as the years went by, you know, it became, you know, Gangster Crip. The bus stop on Olympic in La Brea, you know, it used to be a place called Pops before it became Taco Bell, before we see cats that were coming from either the jungle or cats they were coming from schoolyard neighborhood to get to LA High. They had to go up La Brea and get off the bus stop and then go and then go uh, east on Olympic. But see what happened was that was Mansfield neighborhood. So all of you know Mansfields were going to John Burroughs and Fairfax. So it was a whole lot of craziness that went down right there on the corner of Olympic and, and, and La Brea. There was East Side Cats, you know, there was Inglewood, there was Watts, there was Compton. You come to like Mansfield Hood, you know, we're talking from, you know, Pico and Fairfax and La Brea and John Burroughs and, you know, people that know this right now know about Burger King back in the day, off of Wilshire, leaving John Burroughs, you know, all the way to Fairfax, Hamilton, LA, that side of town, it was like a lot of these guys, if you saw them at the Beverly Center back then, you probably wouldn't even know they were gangsters. All the Mansfields called me like the, the honorary Mansfield just because <laughs> I grew up in the same neighborhood, you know what I mean? But you know they always kind of protected me because I was I never was involved in the gang. I never, you know, got in fights and that kind of stuff. They just kind of were always super protective of me. But Ronnie was one of those dudes with just like, yeah, he was doing his thing, but he had a great personality. Ronnie and me used to battle dressing. Like Ronnie was one of the first dudes I come to school. When I say this, it's gonna bring back a whole lot of Mansfield memories. Anybody over 30, Ronnie used to be decking Diodorus. I mean, you remember with Diodorus? The white, yeah. the white ones with the blue. The stripes. white ones with the straight navy blue stripes. You know, shout out Dion Best, shout out Puppet, shout out Zoyo. You know what I mean? All the OG Mansfields. But that was like you know, Fila BJ's. Ronnie used to keep some Fila BJ's on deck. Everyone knew Mansfield. MFA stood for Mansfield Hustler, but at JB, they also added the acronym Money, Feeler, and Hoes. Money, Feeler, and Hoes. Which of the money that they were trying to get. The money was what they were getting. Feelers is what's like the, the uniform. Feeler, and we, back then we called it Feeler BJ. We just get older, you realize Bjorn Borg, the famous uh, tennis player at that time, BJ stood for Bjorn Borg. But you know, in the hood, we just said feel a BJ. They really didn't, you know, niggas weren't following tennis. Looney was always, he was always dip, head to toe. A lot of people didn't know I grew up in that neighborhood. They didn't know that I was from the Mansfield, you know, whole circle. So I ended up making a name for myself. But one thing I never forgot is I never forgot where I came from. His workings to try to change, not only his life around, but to, he's always was talking, preaching about change, trying to make a difference. So when he got with the Amer I Can program with Jim Brown, he invited me to go to the prisons, to go to the youth authority camps. I remember Ronnie hooked me up and I went in there and did a show for 150 lifers. All because of Looney, you know what I mean? And I, I was terrified, nigga, I was terrified. But I went in that motherfucker and killed him. I do 60, 70 cities a year, but this was, this was a true test as a comedian, like, you know, if I can go in there, like I felt like if I can if I can kill in prison, there's no comedy club on the planet, you know, like and I always thank him for that because that helped that made me super tough. Super hard because if there's ever a tough crowd, it's 150 killers. His whole thing was if I can make these guys laugh, if I can get them on a positive road, it'll it'll calm down that anger and that in the in that, you know, that side of them in jail. People that think everybody in the hood is bad. Think anybody uh, south of Wilshire is a gang banging, drug dealing, crackhead slash dealer. No, not not everything in the hood is bad. I'm, I'm a great example. I came from it and I made something out of it. Ronnie went hard in the paint for that Amer I Can program. He went hard in the paint. I mean, he was trying to help these young kids, these young guys who, who you know, really don't have no guidance. Like, they were his kids. 
Man, when I heard that he was murdered, my whole thing is, you know, just, you know, tell me this is like a dream. Tell me, tell me, tell me this isn't happening. You know what I mean? Just tell me this is happening because the first thing that went to my mind is how much he was about changing this thing around. When they told me he was mur murdered, it, it hurt me, it was hard to believe. But the thing that made it worse is when I found out it was a young kid. Because that kid didn't know he's trying to help people just like you. A gun is as easy as going to buy some fucking red vines or cigarettes or a Sprite. Guns nowadays, it's unfortunate, it's like going to buy a pair of Air Force Ones. It's like going to buy an L.A. Dodger cap. If you ask that, that kid, why do you have a gun? I bet you he's going to say, I got to protect myself because of the way these streets are now. And of course, that was horrible fucking judgment. You took somebody's life. I don't know that kid's situation. I don't know if he didn't get love at home. I don't know if he didn't have a mama or a daddy. Somebody that's like my age, you know, that you know, that you knew so long is gone now.